الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, in the respect of the lecture, try and sit on your hams as you sit in salah. If you get tired, then sit in any comfortable position. Lower your gaze and listen to the lecture with full concentration because by looking here and there, by playing around with your clothes, body or hair, or by giving divided attention, it is possible that you may not gain all the blessings. The compassionate and the embodiment of Noor, the noble Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said, On the day of judgment, there will be no shade except the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. Three categories of people will be in the shade of the throne. Upon hearing this, he sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, who will they be? The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam replied, the one who relieves my follower from, any, from his predicaments, the reviver of my sunnah, and the one who extensively reads durood upon me. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. On page 45 of Muqashifatul Qulub, a publication of Maktabatul Madina of Dawat Islami, it is stated that it is written in Daqaiq al-Akhbar that on the Day of Judgment, an individual, a person will be brought in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. When his deeds will be weighed, the scale that will hold his bad deeds would become heavy. And it will be ordered to put him to hell or to take him to hell. At that time, a single strand of hair of one of his eyelashes would humbly ask Allah Azza wa Jal, that, O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, your beloved Prophet, your most beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has stated that whoever cries out of fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal forbids the fire of hell upon him. And I cried out of your fear. At that moment, Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy will exceed his anger and the person will be forgiven for the sake of one hair that shed tears. At that moment, Sayyidina Jibra'il Alaihi Salam will call out, that so and so has been relieved because of one hair. My dear Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, with this narration we realize that how the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal and how crying out with the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal relieves one from going to hell. This narration also reveals infinite mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal that simply because of one hair, because of one strand of hair of an eyelash became the reason for forgiveness. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal is most merciful and most forgiving. And even if the most minor act of goodness, ple goodness pleases Him, He rewards the person in ways we are unable to understand. Likewise, it pleases Allah Azza wa Jal when a person repents sincerely with his heart so Allah Azza wa Jal can forgive his sins. In, in a book, Kitab al-Tawabin, there is a story narrated by Sayyidina Kabul Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was a great Tabai saint. Once, two men from Bani Israel tribe were walking towards the masjid. 
When they reached the masjid, one man entered the masjid, but the other was overtaken by the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. So instead of entering into the masjid, he remained outside and said, I am a sinner, therefore I am not worthy of entering into the pure house of Allah Azza wa Jal. This act of humbleness pleased Allah Azza wa Jal so much that Allah Azza wa Jal granted him the rank of Siddiq and my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel. A Siddiq is a higher in rank than a Wali and a Shaheed. And a Siddiq means a truthful person. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, we see how merciful and generous Allah Azza wa Jal is. The fear of Allah Azza wa Jal and a small act of humbleness pleased him so much that he granted the person a rank of Siddiq, a truthful person. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, keep Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy in mind. Helps a believer to be, to be hopeful. Keeping Allah's mercy in mind helps a believer to be hopeful and this increase the desire to act righteously and to do more good deeds. However, what is equally important is to keep in mind is the fear of Allah Azza wa To be fearful of Allah Azza wa anger and it helps us to stay away from sins and to repent from our previous ones. Today, our hearts are rusting because of the intensity of sins that we are committing. This is not to say that people are not doing good deeds because they are, people are doing good deeds. But sins are taking place side by side. For example, offering salah in a masjid is a good deed. However, while walking towards the masjid, while walking to the masjid, our eyes are wandering and looking at forbidden things. And therefore, we waste the good effects that being in the masjid had on our hearts. So, we are engaged in both good and bad deeds at the same time. And why is this? And I ask a question, why is this? It is because we do not fear Allah Azza wa Jal as we should. Fearing Allah Azza wa Jal, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, is not just an exclusive characteristics of the prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal, of the saints or those who are specially near to him, but rather it is a feeling that should be within the hearts of all believers. Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded us to fear him in the Quran in many different verses. In Surah Hashr, it is stated, translation from Kansun Iman, O believer, fear Allah and every soul should see what it has sent forth for tomorrow. Without a doubt, Allah is aware of your doings. In Surah Baqarah, translation from Kansun Iman, remain fearing Allah and know that Allah knows all things. In Surah Nisa, translation from Kansun Iman, O people, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul. Our beloved Prophet وسلم, has brought us only good news for us, but also called our attention for, to the issue of fearing Allah in many of his beautiful sayings. Let's look at some of these precious sayings of our beloved Prophet The most beloved Prophet of Allah وسلم, strictly emphasized on fearing Allah and reminded the believers to always fear Allah. And the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasallam has stated, when the, when the heart of a believer beats with the fear of Allah azza wa jal, his sins fall just like the way leaves fall off a tree. Subhanallah. It is narrated by Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala wasallam has stated that Allah azza wa jal will say, whoever has remembered me or feared me, take him out of the fire of hell. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, we are created to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and we are constantly being tested. It is stated in Surah Mulk, translation from Kanzul Iman, He who has created death and life, that he may test you as to whose work is excellent amongst you, and he is the esteemed one, the forgiving. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, this is truth. It is indeed very true that our lives are very short. There is not much time left before we are eventually brought before Allah Azza wa Jal to give account for everything that we have done in this world. Based on our deeds, our eternal life will be decided for us. Therefore, every moment of our life is very precious for us. Remember 
that each moment that has passed will never come back. In the short amount of time that we are in this world, we have to prepare ourselves for our grave and the day of judgment. Our goals in our life should follow the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal and His beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Wasallam to follow the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Wasallam to good deeds, to do good deeds and to avoid committing sins. The fear of Allah Azza wa Jal will help us to achieve all these goals in our lives. Therefore, we must struggle and make every effort to gain the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. There are six things that we can do that will help us to be successful in gaining the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. What are those six things? Number one, repent sincerely with our hearts for our sins and supplicate, make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal that He grants us His fear. Number two, always think about the benefits and reward we get for fearing Allah Azza wa Jal that have been mentioned in the Holy Quran and in the beautiful sayings of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Wasallam. Number three, think about the punishments of hell while keeping our weaknesses in our mind. Number four, read stories about Malaika, angels, Anbiya, Prophet Alaihi Wasallam, Sahaba Ikram, the companions Alaihi Muridwan, the Awliya Allahs, the saints Rahimahumullah to see how they feared Allah Azza wa Jal. Number five, Fikri Madina, make it a habit to account for our own deeds. And number six, sit in the presence, in the company of people who has been blessed with the fear of Allah Azza wa Now let's take a look. Let's take the detailed look at all these six pointers that we've just discussed. Our first pointer was to repent sincerely with our heart for our sins. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, when we travel somewhere alone, we try to take as little stuff as possible to make it easier for ourselves so that we don't run into any problems just like this. Similarly, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, if you want to be successful in our graves and on the day of judgment, then before going away from this world, we should try to lower the weight of our sins. We should try to lower the burden of our sins as much as possible. The way to accomplish this task is to repent sincerely, is to repent with our hearts for our sins because repenting sincerely wipes out the sins as if the sins were never committed. The beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam has stated, a person who repents for his sins is like a one who has never, never committed a sin. Our second pointer was, always think about the benefit and reward we get for fearing Allah Azza wa Jal. As a human being, as a human being, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, it is our nature that we accept and turn towards anything that we see benefit in. Therefore, if we think about the reward we get in, in fearing Allah Azza wa Jal, that have been mentioned in the Holy Quran and in the beautiful sayings of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, it will help us to gain the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. In Surah Rahman, it is stated, translation from Kanzul Iman, and for him, who fears to stand before his Lord, there are two paradise, subhanAllah. In Surah Nur it is stated, translation from Kanzul Iman, and he who obeys Allah and his messenger and fears Allah and guards himself from evil, then such are the people who are successful. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said that the one who cries in the fear of Allah azza wa jal, the one who cries from the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal forgives him. The beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Ali Wa Sallam has stated that the one who cries in, with the fear in the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who cries in the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal will not enter hell. My dear Islamic brothers, such enormous gifts, such huge gifts for those who cry out of fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. SubhanAllah. A third pointer was to think about the punishment of hell. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, we should look at ourselves. Imagine about yourself. Look at yourselves. We are weak. We don't have the ability to handle any punishment of Allah Azza wa whether in the grave or in hell. We cannot even handle a little bit of pain in this world, like a minor headache, a fever or a small cut. Imagine, think, realize 
how can our weak bodies be able to handle the punishment of Allah Azzawajal? Our fourth pointer was to read stories about the angels, the prophets and the saints. Let's look, let's realize how much these people feared Allah Azzawajal. The beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam has stated, whenever Sayyidina Jibra'il Alayhi Salam came to me, he would be trembling, he would be shaking with the fear of Allah Azzawajal. Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that whenever Sayyidina Ibrahim Khalilullah ala Nabi Jina alayhi salatu wasalam would stand for salah, he would cry so much with the fear of Allah azawajal that the heavy beating of his heart would be heard a mile away. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the first person amongst the adult male to accept Islam, Allah azawajal would send salam, Allah azawajal would send greetings upon him through Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, such an honored companion would sit alone by himself and would cry saying, I wish my mother had never given birth to me. I wish I were a bird. I wish I was a hair of a believer's body. I wish I were a part of a grass that would get cut by the foot of an ox. Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a courageous companion about whom the beloved Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said, if there was to be another prophet after me, it would be Umar. Such an honorable companion would cry so much with the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. While leading the congregational prayer, the sound of his cry would be heard up till the third row. When Sayyidina Imam Zainul Abideen radiallahu ta'ala anhu would make ablution, would do wudu, the color of his face would change due to the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. When asked, why is this? He would reply, do you not know? who I'm about to stand in front of. Sayyidina Imam Azam, Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the leader of a Hanafi school of thought, lived for 70 years. It has been narrated about him that in 70 years, he never backbited anybody. Sayyidina Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, leader of Hanbali school of thought, states, the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal has stopped me from eating or drinking. Therefore, I don't even feel hungry or thirsty, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel. Look at the degree of fear these honored and forgiven people had in their hearts. Even while praying Salah, even while performing good deeds, even after the blessed Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam gifted them with the paradise, they would think about their grave. They would think about the day of judgment. They would think about the fire of hell and would have so much fear of Allah Azza wa in their hearts and would cry so much. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, we cry over our sins also. But at the same time, we do not stop committing sins. We do not abandon committing sins. We live our lives carelessly without fearing Allah Azza wa without fearing of His punishment and His warnings. Our fifth pointer was, to do fikr Madina, to do account, to make accountability, to account, to account for our own good, good or bad deeds, to help us account for our deeds, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel. I, my Amir Ahli Sunnah, the reviver of Sunnah, the scholar of Sharia, the leader of Dawat e Islami, Hazrat Allama Maulana Muhammad Ilyas Sattar Qadri Razavi Ziyai Damad Barakatul Alia has given us a small pocket-sized book called Madani in Ahmad. This book lists all the good deeds that we do and all the bad deeds that we, that we need to stay away from in order to become a true, a good Muslim. Sayyidina Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala anhu has stated, O oh people, account for your deeds before the day of judgment comes and your deeds are accounted for. Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu states, to worry and be concerned for this world builds darkness in our hearts. And to worry and be concerned for the hereafter builds noor for our hearts. My dear Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, every night, every night before going to bed, we should do, we must do, we must realize the importance of this. We must do Fikre Madina, account for our deeds for at least, for at least 12 minutes. My request to all Islamic brothers, is to please get the Madani Inamat card from the Maktabatul Madina. Fill it out every night and hand it to the Islamic brother that is in charge of collecting it within the first 10 days of every Islamic month. Inshallah, 
with the blessing of this Madani Inamat card, you will see a good change within yourself. You will see that you're gaining a fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. Our sixth pointer was to sit in the presence of people who have been blessed with the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. A company of good people has good effects on a person. And sitting in the presence, a company of bad people has bad effects on a person. The kinds of people that we interact with or sit with, whether good or bad, after a while we begin to follow what they do, whether good or bad. For example, many of the brothers who have joined the beautiful atmosphere, the Madani, the righteous Madani environment of Dawat Islami, if you ask them how they came into Dawat Islami, they will tell you. They sat down with other fellow Islamic brothers who were already in Dawat Islami. After sitting with them, their hearts accepted and felt a sense of peace. So they, therefore, they all joined Dawat Islami. But if they never sat down with them, they would never have felt this love and peace. Therefore, they would have never been with Dawat Islami today. My dear Islamic brothers, one very good way to sit in the presence, in the company of the religious people is by traveling in the Madani Qafilas of Dawat Islami. Every Islamic brother, once in their lifetime, should at least once in their lifetime, should travel in a 12-month Madani Qafila, 30 days in a year, or should at least travel every month until death, three days in the Madani Qafila. Alhamdulillah Azza wa In these Madani Qafilas, we learn faraiz, we learn sunnah, we learn wajibat, and all other things necessary for us to know about living our life properly as a Muslim. Just think, staying inside a masjid for three days in the presence of a company of religious Islamic brothers, how much knowledge, how much knowledge of deen we will gain, how much good change will come in about us. We should also attend the weekly gatherings of Dawat Islami as well. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, with the blessing of traveling in the Madani Qafilas, with the blessing of attending the weekly gathering that takes place every Thursday in your, in your city, Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, we will gain the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. So my dear Islami brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, fear of Allah Azza wa Jal is a great blessing. Amongst the many blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal, fear of Allah Azza wa Jal is very important to have in our hearts because it helps us to know the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal. It helps to make our Iman, our faith more stronger. It helps us to prepare for our grave it helps us to prepare us for the day of judgment. It helps us to, good, to do good deeds. And it helps us to stop committing sins and to stay away from doing all other forbidden acts. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, along with having the fear of Allah Azza wa in our hearts, we should keep Allah's mercy in our mind as well and never be hopeless. Never be hopeless of Allah's mercy. My dear Islamic brothers, imagine, when parents give an order to their child to do certain things, to do something, and after repeated requests, after saying it again and again, they don't obey them. And usually what happens? The parents either hit them, or sometimes the parent even kick them out of their house. But Allah Azza wa is so merciful. Allah Azza wa is so gracious. Allah Azza wa is so generous. Then even after committing sins after sins after sins, even committing sins in abundance, and even after repeated disobediences, Allah Azza wa Jal does not stop showering His mercy, His blessings upon us. He still gives us another chance to repent and make ourselves better. My dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, when we commit a sin, when we commit a sin, we should instantly repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. And if we commit the sin again, we must repent again to Allah Azza wa Jal. And if we commit another sin, we must repent again and again and again. We must never lose hope in the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Remember, Allah Azza wa Jal's mercy has no bounds. Allah Azza wa Jal states in Surah Zumur, translation from Kanzul Iman, say, O my slaves who have oppressed themselves by being disobedient, do not despair of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, who forgives all sins. He is the forgiving, the merciful. In a hadith of Qudsi, Allah Azza wa Jal, the merciful states, My mercy exceeds my wrath. Sometimes, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, sometimes repenting sincerely with the heart or feeling shame or regret for our sins does a person 
what good deeds cannot do. Not worship. This does not mean that we should not worship Allah and do good deeds. This is all dependent. That on this is all dependent on the will of Allah. Sometimes repenting does the job, and sometimes good deeds does the job for us. So whenever you're alone, my dear Islamic brothers and viewers of Madani channel, when nobody's watching you, when you know that you're all by yourself and you want to repent sincerely, you can say in such, you can say, you can repent in such a manner that, Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, your weak slave wants to fill his heart with your fear in order to be successful in, in this world and hereafter. Oh my Allah Azza wa Jal, I am present in your blessed court with my filthy sinful body. Oh my dear Allah Azza wa Jal, forgive me and grant me tawfiq to refrain from sins for the remaining part of my life. O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, grant me such a heart that trembles with your fear. Grant me such eyes that shed tears out of your fear. Grant me such body that trembles and shake with your fear. Ameen. Bijahi Nabil Ameen. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. My dear Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, let me tell you the virtues of a sunnah along with some etiquettes as I conclude my speech. The embodiment of Noor, the mercy of the universe has said, whosoever loved my sunnah, loved me, and whosoever loved me will be with me in paradise. The Madani pearls being mentioned will consist of practices that are sunnahs, as well as etiquettes and manners based on the advice and practices of the saints, rahimahumullah. It should be known that an action can only be called a sunnah when one is certain of it. Inshallah, we'll learn some Madani pearls about shaking hands. It is sunnah to shake with both of the hands when meeting someone while saying salam. Say salam upon leaving as well. You may also shake hands if you like. It is the saying of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Wasallam. When two Muslims shake hands upon meeting and ask each other how they are, Allah Azza wa Jal descends a hundred mercies upon them, of which ninety mercies are for the one who met more graciously and asked how the other was in a pleasant manner. When two friends meet, shake hands and recite durood, send salutations upon the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, their past and their future sins are forgiving. When shaking hands, if possible, read the following dua as well. يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ Meaning, may Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us and you. The dua that two Muslims make while shaking hands will inshallah Azza wa Jal be accepted and both will be given before they part their hands. My dear Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, about the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, we heard about different sunnahs of shaking hands. And we heard that how sending salutations and durood upon the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Wasallam helps us to be forgiven, helps our sins to be forgiven. My dear Islamic brothers, Dawat Islami is an environment, Dawat Islami is a righteous Madani environment that gives you the opportunity, that gives you the mindset, that gives you a thought that I must try, that I must strive to reform myself and the people of the whole world. And within these two phrases, that I must try to reform myself and the people of the whole world, there's a whole essence of fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. One should always fear Allah Azza wa Jal. As we heard that the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal helps one to commit good deeds and refrain from sins. I humbly urge all the Islamic brothers, I humbly urge all the Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel to come and join Dawat Islami and see the wonders that are there in the Dawat Islami. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal. Thumma Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal. The problems and worries are resolved for different Islamic brothers when they actually join Dawat Islami, when they attend the weekly gatherings of Dawat Islami, when they travel in the Madani Qafilas of Dawat Islami. And what more could you ask for? You learn the different sunnah, you learn the etiquettes of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And we've heard 
that our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that whoever loves my Sunnah, it is such that he loves me and whoever loves me will be with me in paradise. What more one could ask for? What more one could wish for if he is with the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? My dear Islam brothers, Dawat Islami is a non-political propagational movement of Quran and Sunnah that teaches you how to lead your life according to Sharia, according to Quran and Sunnah. Let's join Dawat Islami and let's prosper here in this world and hereafter. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept all our deeds and forgive all our sins and may Allah Azza wa Jal grant us His fear. Ameen bijahin nabi lameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Mubalik for you, it's my prayer. Mubalik for you, it's my prayer. May you keep ascending success. Say, O Mubalik for you, it's my prayer. May you keep ascending success.